Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. John Wilson here, National Spokesman for the National Strike Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to listen to this next uploaded research uh, by a, a great brother here in Australia, Mr. Wayne Glue. Mr. Wayne Glue absolutely chops and dices all of this uh, councils and uh, taxation, et cetera, et cetera. Wayne knows what he's talking about. He's one of the best in his business. Okay, listen to this 18 minute uh, upload by Wayne. Uh, it's gonna, it's gonna uh, really educate you. Ladies and gentlemen, join this national local council rate strike. Please join us. Let's uh, let's enforce the law. Let's enforce the law of this country. All of what they are doing to the, to us has no lawful foundation. Good morning, again. I'm going to read from the Commonwealth Constitution, it, and uh, annotated version, Quick and Garren, the Maroon one. The reason I'm doing that, it contains the Hansard of the interpretation of our constitution via all the people who wrote it. It contains the Commonwealth Constitution Act 1900 UK. It is law in as much as, as these people interpret it. They put it together. <clears throat> Their system is what was put to the Queen and everything else. Now, I'll start with this. If the question was asked of some politician who had not considered the subject with sufficient accuracy where the supreme power resided in our government, he would answer that it was vested in the state constitution. This opinion approaches near the truth but does not reach it, for the truth is the supreme, absolute and uncontrollable authority remains with the people. So who really is the government? The people. The people are the Commonwealth, whether you like it or not. Now, when you go look at further into the Constitution, which we'll come to later if we need to, the Constitution is clear. You cannot tax land that belongs to the, to the Commonwealth. And we're the Commonwealth. So what's that tell you without being too bright? We're the Commonwealth. We have the supremacy. Now you go to page 676, it says the Parliament's not supreme and they're subject to the law. In a little bit longer sentence, but I've said it before, so I shouldn't have to repeat it a hundred times. Now, page 791 says neither the federal nor the state Parliament are sovereign bodies. They're only legislatures with limited authority. What does that mean? And it says, if they attempt to pass a law in excess of that authority, the law is a nullity and affords no obedience. What does that mean? What you need to comprehend is there is no way that you can sit in our parliament and claim to be a government because you're a legislature. What is a legislature? It's a group of people selected by and sworn in to represent the people, to debate and pass laws for the good government of this country. And apparently you people can't get it through your thick head to all the rights you have. When do you get to do that? When you're called by the governor of each state or the governor general at federal level to come to the parliament to, to debate and pass that legislation. <clears throat> do you know? Because you've decided you had the right to change the system. Overturn the provisions of the Constitution, chapter one, chapter 1 and 2. And you've overturned the third chapter as well, but I'll come to that later. And what you've done, you've decided that you could do whatever you like and run it by political parties. Well, political parties are traitors. Everybody who pays them, puts money into them, supports them in any way, is a traitor to this country. Like it or lump it, that's the law. Every single one of you, before you take your position anywhere in any government department, you have to swear the oath in our constitution. You have no exception to that. doesn't exist. You've got to do it before you take your seat. Not you go take your seat and you get around to it one day. No. 
And that oath is contained in the Constitution. And it involves heirs and successors to the throne. And as I said in the last visitors um, video, who is the Queen of Australia with no successors to the throne? If you accept Queen of Australia, who's King Charles? He's not a successor to the throne because you never had any. He just goes to show how stupid you people are. You can't even get your tax right. But let's go back to the issue. There were seven legislative areas exercisable by the Australasian Council and even less by the colonies. <coughs> this is at, <coughs> at Federation. The problem you got there, all seven are contained in 51 of the Constitution. <coughs> Where in the Constitution does it say you can set up another form of government? Where does it say you have control over our land? It doesn't. So where do you get the control from? Lies, fraud and political parties. More lies. Treason. Treachery to steal, overturn the constitution. All the rest of the things I accuse you of, both in the court here and in England. What's being done about? We're working on it. But it doesn't change the fact in 1979 when the whole six purported Labor states, because there were no states. Remember 1975, the last state removed its constitution? There were none. So you all got your heads together and decide you're going to have another form of government that owned and controlled our land, and you had to bring it in by stealth, which what is what you've been doing. And you say you've got the right to do it, do you? No. Is it granted by the constitution? Page 795 says... You, not me, not us, has to state where your authority comes from and you can't. So who owns the land? The Commonwealth, which is the people. And this is where you come unstuck because you can't fathom it, but it's already done for you by the framers, which is what this is about. And that's why I'm going to go to this and explain why local government does not exist and can't exist. And you clowns, have not worked it out. On page 701 of the annotated constitution is a graph. The one down the bottom there. Now, <coughs> it says Commonwealth, quasi sovereignty. Why do we have quasi sovereignty, the people? Because we give certain legislative authorities to the parliament, to the executive parliament to put together laws to the Parliament to debate and pass them according to the authority we've granted. That is the quasi-sovereignty of the Commonwealth. Nothing to do with England, which you're trying to make out. It's us, we the people. So when the Constitution says you can't tax land belonging to the people, it's telling you straight out you can't tax our land. Any of it, not one little bit. As soon as we purchase it, we purchase it in fee simple under Chalice Real Property 3rd Edition, which says we got every aspect of ownership except we can't card it away. Nowhere in there does it say the Crown still owns it, because they don't. They don't. Your Crown are nothing but lying, filthy traitors, and you don't. Now, the next part of this is the Federal Constitution which is the constitution contained in here. Plus, this is the annotation, which is the public record, which is contained and part of our constitution. Then it says federal government, federal parliament, federal executive, federal judiciary. State government, state parliament, state executive, state judiciary. Now, we'll just deal with the federal one. Federal executive is the governor general in council. So how are you going to get this brain-dead clown that you are trying to purport to be the Governor-General who hates this country, speaks against it, belongs to groups that are against it, to sit in the, in the Federal Executive, select ten from the lower house, eight from the upper, and form an Executive Parliament which puts legislation together? Because the Parliament can't. It's there to debate and part legis pass legislation. It can't put legislation together. So all your garbage about 
oh, we're going to have a referendum, we're going to do this, we've passed this, we've passed that. No, you put it together. It's invalid. It's treason, fraud, and you were never selected lawfully. Now, your purported Governor-General must comply with 62 to 68 of the Constitution. Can't. It's not an office of the Crown. Doesn't represent the British Crown. Doesn't represent our Crown because we're still a self-governing colony of England until we take it out. Not you. Now, then you've got the Federal Parliament. That's their... They only called in to debate and pass the legislation according to the Constitution. And you can run around now saying the Senate is a high court of the Parliament. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's supposed to find out all the things that the um, lower house, being the House of Representatives, you know, the people that represent us, who have a group opposing us in there, those ones, those ones that can't put legislation together, you're trying to tell us that they have authority over us. They have nothing. You have nothing. Then you've got the problem with the federal judiciary. 1979, the same time as you ran through legislation in every state to produce a system of local government which was blatant treason, without any authority under the Constitution, you passed a law controlling our High Court. Then you put in rules which control everything that we do in that court. So every time we file into the High Court and they refuse to look at what we put, they have to look at it. They have to make sure that what we're putting is a question of law or something that needs interpretation by the High Court something out of our constitution. Are they doing that? No. they got things called registrars, which are only office jockeys. There are nothing, have no nothing to do with this, not even imperial law or this. And they are trying to tell us we can or can't put documents into the court. They reject them for no good reason. And most of them, I can vouch for some of them that come out of Western Australia, they're brain-dead clowns. They could not even look at the law in a broad spectrum. They have no idea what it means. And I'm talking about you, Edelman. You sit in cases and make decisions with the full bench of the High Court, then go and sit on your own and rule against it. How does that one work? Somewhere you got disconnected inside your head. It appears that way. You sit as a single judge. When you sat, on HCA 44 of 2010, the 1688 Bill of Rights, habeas corpus, and all imperial law is law in this country and must be abided by, but you're not abiding by it. So what are you doing? Sitting in contempt of your own decision? How dumb is that? Let's get back to this. Where in this constitution does it say you can have a system of local government where people don't are not answerable to us they ignore us, they tax us. Is it a tax? Yeah. 51 subsection 2 of this says any exaction of money, for example, rates, <laughs> look at that, council rates, levies, tolls, licenses, etc., is a tax. If you want to license our vehicles, because you need the numbers and you need to know that car is what it says it is, why do we have to pay ridiculous amounts every year? I get we should have insurance, protect us and the other people. But not a license fee, that's a tax. Oh, but you need it to fix the roads. There we go. When a developer builds the property and everything, they put the roads in. When we buy our blocks of land, that pays for that road. So where do you own literally? And that's to the centre of the road. Who's taken possession of it? Main Roads Australia. You own every single road in this country, but then it's back vested into an unlawful body called local government to look after it. Do they? No, couldn't be bothered. Usually for 15 to 16 years, they do nothing to the roads, footpaths or anything else. In fact, they don't even bother putting footpaths in until you scream and yell at them. So we pay income tax to pay for roads and all the infrastructure. We pay licenses, pay for the roads. 
we pay fuel tax to pay for the roads. So explain you clowns why we are paying local government to fix the roads. The, the tax on fuel runs into trillions every year. Less than 6% goes to the states to pay for roads. Why? And then, oh, look, we're going to be good boys. We're going to give money to the overseas countries in criminal contempt of our constitution and the high court rulings. Criminal contempt, which is jovial. Oh, it's also treason and fraud and treachery to overturn the constitution. But who's really looking? The fact of the matter is, you ask us if we approve the continuance of local government in 1988. You, you ask us if we approve the establishment. We said no to both, and no to empowering and everything else. And you say it wasn't carried. There's no such thing. We don't carry it or release it. We re accept it or reject it. We rejected it. So even though you had unlawfully put it there, we didn't agree you could have it by saying, oh, we'll make a decision whether you can. We said no. Why did we say no? Because you can't have it. Our constitution doesn't approve it, so you can't have it. So any magistrate, judge, politician, or anyone else says local government is lawful, you're lying. You're a thieving, lying traitor that wants to control our land. And as for your, your titles, they're not yours, they're ours. Who told you you could take our titles and hold them? We didn't, so you took them. You stole them. We put them in the banks to guarantee our money that we supposedly borrow, and I'm not getting into that bit because that just doesn't happen. That's just another rip-off. But just look at the fact that we put our titles up so we could borrow money. So the bank gives them to Landgate. Who told them they could? When you finish paying your loan, where's the title? Oh, it's been given to Landgate, and they've made it obsolete, or an old title, no validity. Who gave you control over our titles? We didn't. It's not in the Constitution. It doesn't exist. Page 795, the fourth paragraph says, you have to show where your authority exists. Where is your authority over land or titles? You don't have it. Where does it come from? The Crown. The Crown of England, not the Queen of Australia, because that was Bob Hall, theory, and now somebody else, the King of Australia, who doesn't have any heirs and successors. What happens when he dies? Are you going to produce another one? Who is the King of Australia? Bob Hawke said he was. I've got the book that proves it. He said it. But you people can't see it. So all in all, is local government lawful? It is a state parliament. Is it in its current system? Absolutely not. Do they have control over your land? No, they don't. So when you get around to you brain-dead clowns at Geraldton, city of Greater Geraldton, if that's what you call it, it's not a city. It's a half-baked town that has no provisions for most people in it. Go try and buy something. Oh, yeah, we'll have it in a week, two weeks, even banks. A couple of weeks to get something. How ridiculous is that when you can order something out of New South Wales and get it within three or four days, but you can't get it in from Bunnings within two weeks? How's that service? It isn't. My book, it isn't. Do I shop there? Yes, I do. Why? Because it's the only place you can buy something, because they've squeezed out everybody else in the town. But anyway, getting back to local government, you don't exist lawfully. You are traitors by what you're doing. You are thieves by what you do. And guess what? You stole my land. And you're going to give it back out of your assets, no one else's, because you personally, Van Stein, McKim, the rates clerk, all of you people, you're all guilty of the crimes you've committed. You've got no protection in law. All we have to do is make England deal with you or deal with you ourselves. And it's coming. So you have a lovely day. Catch you next time.